Thank you, folks. For those of you that just tuned out, I want to ask this question. Is the Patriot Act unpatriotic? David? The question isn't, is it unpatriotic? That's completely open to interpretation anyway. And really, who gives a shit about what some lame country and western singer thinks? No. The question is whether it's unconstitutional, and the answer is yes. Sunda! The Patriot Act is definitely patriotic. It's fine. It's not going to affect, you know, me or any of us unless your name is Ahmed, and if it is, you're probably up to something. <laughs> Great! I have a big problem with the surveillance provisions of the Patriot Act because it says very clearly right in the Constitution, if you want to go to your mosque to help plot the murder of thousands of civilians, you shouldn't have to whisper. Jim, I think the term unconstitutional is overused. If the U.S. Constitution is ever legitimately used to shield somebody involved in terrorism, then we should take it out of the Smithsonian and use it when we run out of toilet paper. What? That's, that's, you're as fresh as paint. <laughs> uh, Dave, what do you think? How much freedom are you willing to give up for the uh, for this? Well, any or not? Okay, let me let me say this. I mean, let's okay. uh, let's keep the focus on what's truly important here, and yes. and that is if if this disallows me to access internet porn, uh, right. then seriously, you can lock up as many innocent Muslim Americans as you want. All right? I mean, really, who gives who cares about them except a handful of uppity Jews? Really, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, when you come after an innocent white man's internet porn, then you're coming after Lady Liberty herself. <laughs> but that is the, uh, I think the ACLU, I think they really have their finger on the pulse of the nation. I mean, because when a bunch of savages fly a plane into your office building, the most important thing is that the charities and individuals that funded the attack are protected. I mean, that really is. <laughs> I think you're being sarcastic. No! <laughs> All right. You know what, I, uh, no. I, I was pretty worried about the Patriot Act, too, and I thought, and I thought man, I don't, I don't want the government uh, looking into my computer and my medical records and my library records, and, and then I realized, right, I'm not plotting a terrorist attack against the United States. This should probably work out fine for me. Yeah, but it, it's about abuse. It's about abusing it. And you say you mentioned slippery slope, and they've already tried to um, do a Patriot Act two or Patriot Act, Patriot whatever the sequel was called, Goes West, or you know, right. the Rise of the Machines, or whatever it was. But Patriot Wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that and that and that was uh, you know a lot more extreme, and they would have gotten away with it if people hadn't not simply the ACLU, but people hadn't gone wait 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 wait, and then uh, and people more than just the ACLU have been examining and against the Patriot Act. So, but to me, the ACLU. Uh, the grapes. Good. <laughs> the grapes are good. Yeah. I go for kind of a Roman emperor theme. A lot of people complained when I was eating the stupid cupcakes, but I just think that ultimately. You know, if you, the Patriot Act is so mild, from what I've read of it, it's the mildest thing in the world. All they want to do is be able to go online, not just people's email, all these little wiretapping things, and it's like, at some point you have to give allowance to the fact that a guy, because we didn't get into that guy's computer, that's not why 9-11 happened, but it certainly, you know, was one of the things that could have been, uh, maybe possibly done something to help it. But, but, There's but a lot of inept, go ahead. No, uh, I'm sorry. Well, but that's not the only thing. The, the main change in the Patriot Act, and specifically this thing that we're talking about, that Section 215, whatever, the, the main change is that you used to have to show... Why, why would people laugh at that point? Because you actually knew Section 215. Yeah. I'm, I'm a genius, Jim. The crowd's like, yeah. <laughs> pull out Section no. 215 on us. All right. <laughs> but, uh, well, you told me to mention it before. <laughs> no. They, you know, they're just what it's. It's a main. The main change there is that before you were able to do this kind of surveillance on somebody, they had to be. Uh, they had to. You had to have probable cause that they were actually terrorists or engaged right. in terrorist activity. Probable cause. Now you just have to go to a judge and say you think that they're relevant to a terrorist investigation, right. which means pretty much anybody could have their record searched. So that's what some people are freaking out about. Sure. Yeah, and they should be. But they. But that's only if you take the point of view like, okay, the danger of the government, which is. Obviously, at least the police states, is worse than the danger of something that actually happened. I mean, talk about a slippery slope, I could say, hey, since they blew up the World Trade Center, if we don't start changing things, the slippery slope is they'll blow up every building in the country. So, I mean, the slippery slope works two ways. Tom, let me uh, answer this by taking this pipe. Okay. <laughs> I think um, this will help me get my point across. Um, First of all, I forgot what my point is. I do enjoy well, this pipe. It does look like it's a good point because of the pipe. But let me ask you this. Article 216, which is not section 
Section 215 is for the kids. I go with 216. <laughs> that's from the New England but Patriot the, yeah. Act, and that's much different. Well, that's, 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 that's what but that's what you were talking about. That's a specific thing. Yeah, no, there's I a lot of other that. provisions you're in, right. in, the, in the, you know, but stuff about lawyers and things like that. Relative hey, you, to you yeah. should really make that point clear, because the Patriot Act is pretty expansive. And there's yeah, it's expansive, but it's all child. I mean, you need to complain about this whole expansive thing. There's one little thing. Is their only problem uh, that, Plenty of people complained about it. the ACLU did not. They had no... I was... Why are you just... Why are you solely focused on, you know, 20 Jews? You know? <laughs> because they, they, to me, they represent a lot of, uh, of the problem on the left, I think. Now, the ACLU, the problem with them is their inherent dishonesty. I don't think they're that afraid to pay for that. Inherent dishonesty? Yes. What are you talking Be because about? Because what they're really afraid of is their growing irrelevance. The fact that the country has changed to a certain degree and they they're, want to acknowledge they're that. They're more relevant now than they ever not, were. When they were Wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. When they were defending black voting rights and women's rights, they were relevant. But now that they, they're, they're defending just child molesters and terrorists, they're, they're not, not relevant They're not defending just child molesters and just terrorists. They're, doing, they're also doing effort. significant stuff. They're fighting to get uh, midgets on police departments. <laughs> You're right. And that's yes. important. Uh, that's there's very a important. lot of stuff. All right, folks, we'll be right back. This <laughs> oh. A stellar. All right, all right. You know, folks, I'll be honest with you, people. New York City is opening the first public gay high school with taxpayer dollars. I don't know what you, this, this, this September. I think it's a good idea. I wouldn't want to clean the bathrooms. But you know, well, come on, you know how horny high school kids are. These kids are be mauling each other like it's a Dolce & Gabbana Christmas party. But I will, I will say this, it's called Manolo Blahnik High School. Now, I don't know who that is, but I think it's a shoemaker from Sex in the City. People say, oh, it'll promote decadent sex. That's only the males. Decadent sex, the girls won't be doing that. They'll be too busy in woodshop. But I just, <laughs> guys are always gonna be decadent sex. People don't understand this about gay guys. They're not more decadent than straight guys. They're just doing what we would do if we could get regular girls to act like that. We'd be on the piers, be in the poots, the glory holes, AIDS, we wouldn't care. You know, that's how we'd be, ladies. So keep that in mind. But let's talk about, uh, oh, Kobe, Kobe. We gotta join Kobe first. Kobe had the nerve you know, to show up at the Teen Choice Awards yesterday. Now, let me tell you something. He really did. And I didn't like his speech either. He said, I don't give teens a choice. <laughs> All right, you want to go to the... It's one thing to go to the thing. That's a good one. You know it. Oh. Oh, he... Kobe couldn't have set me up better for that one. <laughs> now, since he started out lying, do you doubt everything he says in his defense, Jim? Or, you know, you've been in a few pickles, let's face it. Um... <laughs> No, I don't doubt him, actually, and I don't think he raped that girl, because I feel when your team wins three out of four championships, legally, you should just be able to stick it wherever you like. Yeah. You know what? What do you guys think about that? Obviously, Jim's kidding, because he's a New York How dare you say that about L.A., anything positive like that, or the stupid Lakers. <laughs> but do you guys have any opinion on this Kobe thing, or are you just going to see but where you know it something? It just always seems to be on the woman. You know, well, she visited the room, and, you know, she knows what to expect. No, she, I mean, we all know the rumor about the black man, so. She wanted to see for herself, is that what they're saying? Well, but I mean, the truth is, from a guy's perspective. Twelve inches. You take a legend like... <laughs> I'm just going to pretend that's like sort of about me and maybe they'll cut it right. <laughs> yeah. No, but from a guy's perspective, if you're at the hotel, let's say once in a while I've been at the hotel, the legend's been around for years, you know. I'm not Kobe Bryant, but yeah, I give you credit. Girl goes, oh, my friend will call me. Hey, let's go out to this club with this girl downstairs wants to come off work. She's hot. Then she shows up and now she's, what do you want to do? Just like talk about my MTV days? I mean, at a certain point... You know, that's, that's no reason yeah. to rape somebody, but, you know but let's be realistic. <laughs> what I'm what? just I saying, why I, does I she think, think Kobe Bryant, world travel, or whatever the hell he is, wants to hang out with well, us? Well, first of all, I think that if anyone wants to talk about your MTV days, that is a reason to rape somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, but I don't think... Uh, but why can't why, why are people shocked that he lied? It's the same thing with Clinton when he first... Well, he started out lying. Why didn't he tell the truth from the start? Of course you start out lying. You're not just going to admit it. It's like my mother always said, in a relationship, you have to tell the truth once you know for sure they have DNA evidence. <laughs> That's a true story. My mother really said that. She was ahead of her time. Yeah, she was a very bright woman. They're actually, um, they're actually saying that uh, there's possible, the prosecution is saying there's some sort of evidence now of like anal sex. Yes. Um, and I just feel that, you know, as big as he is, that uh, this woman deserves a round of applause just for not being in a wheelchair. Uh, How do you know? Well, uh, but that's the whole point. But that's what everybody's saying. Now, this is the interesting question. Well, if you're, let's say you're having sex, yeah. doggy style, right? And then suddenly the guy decides he's going to... 
It's go. a mistake. That's what guys say. It was a mistake. I didn't know it was going to slip. But if he does do that, then is that rape? I think it is. Well, this whole gay thing is... That's uh, rape. What gay thing? What are you no, talking about? You have sex and it just slips in the other... That's, that's, not, not, that's not a slip. It doesn't Stupid. slip. That's what I'm saying. You guys are just too much with that. Yeah, oh, you guys mistake. are crazy. You guys. They you never slipped, right? He's a I nice agree guy. with you. You bastards. What's yeah. going on? He bought him one. Will Colby get a fair trial? Yeah, he's gonna get a fair trial. This is not to kill a mockingbird. I mean, everybody's gonna. Thank really, you. It's gonna be fair. Um, from what I heard, that they're gonna plead down from rape to a hand job with a mean stare. <laughs> well, okay, let's talk about the gay high school. Uh, with all the information that's coming out, uh, the gay high school is this uh, segregation? Because a lot of like they said, like a hundred like Puerto Rican ministers and some upstate guy that's like a. Uh, we're, we're, you know, conservative or all protesting this high school, saying that it's, you know, it's segregation. Well, I, I thought we already had a gay high school, the school for performing arts. <laughs> but I guess. Uh, I thought we, we had need one too. One. Yeah, we need Catholic one for, for gay kids with no talent. Apparently, we need a whole separate school. For that. There you go. Well, you can't you be that rough. Deal, they can, they we can, can use you with our banter. You gotta watch the messages. We'll be right back. You know, whenever we're starting to feel good about our little production here, we log on to the Tough Crowd message board to get some humility. Occasionally, we like to respond to your venom on air. And to help me out today is Greg Giraldo. Hi, Greg. Hi, Colin. The posts that drive me crazy are from the anonymous jackasses who think we suck and that they ought to be on the panel to show us how it's done. Oh, yeah? Well, a few weeks ago, we contacted about a dozen message board braggarts and offered them to come on this show live and read their posts. Most of these spineless jellyfish did not respond. We're talking right in the area. Only two had the balls to write back, and one of them had the balls to show up. Please welcome Asm. He's gonna, he's gonna read his real post that was on the... Is anyone else tired of Colin Quinn not being funny? Am I the only one who wanted, who wanted someone tonight to throw hot coffee in Colin's face for that terrible potato joke. Can we roll that clip, please? <laughs> it's a true story. It's not a joke at all. I went to a topless bar the other night. It rained and my potato got soggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I certainly can't argue with that, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't appreciate the fact that you're obviously a young man and uh, you know, you don't understand the levels that I'm working at with the irreverence and the deconstruction of that joke. I understand that too, but you're probably more at home like cackling over Stickler, getting like an American Pie in his balls on American Wedding 3, whatever the hell it is. Stifler, Stifler. Stifler, well, I don't know, you know. <laughs> but uh, I work on a lot of levels, and you're talking about one level, and I'd like to take you to that one level and kick you down the three, three flights. But listen to me. Okay, we'll get back to that. Greg. None of the people who slammed you online wanted to do it in person, including this one. Maybe he's heard about your Latin temper. Here's your next message. He's a typical vendido, venidido Hispanic when it's convenient, constantly struggling to gain the acceptance of Anglo-Americans. We don't need any more self-loathing coconuts that just make our tribe weak. <laughs> well, aren't you a sanctimonious little prick? You were, in, you were invited on the show to confront me in person, but you declined. I guess you're too busy squeezing in your sister's panties and grinding against your Mario Lopez poster. <laughs> Honestly, your little piece of predictable, regurgitated dribble is more disappointing than insulting. I'd like to think that as Hispanics in America, we've moved beyond your limited worldview. It's sad that there are still mongrels like you who complain about racism and stereotyping, but then call a person a sellout when he doesn't fit the stereotype. By the way, you really showed pride in your heritage by misspelling the only Spanish word in your post. <laughs> Finally, I am not a coconut. I am a human being. Coconuts are brown, hairy balls like the ones on your chin every night. I don't know. All right. Good one. That felt good. 
Pablo Neruda Cervantes would be proud of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That Another man. Was that, that the same, that no, the same no, guy? No, no. Pablo uh, Neruda uh, 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 comma. Uh. Cervantes comma Gabriel Garcia Marquez. All right, look. <laughs> This is about as funny as my potato joke, apparently, but <laughs> another message board brat wrote something about me after I said hip-hop shouldn't be taught at Harvard. So we're going to bring them out, and they're going to do the same. Oh, <laughs> you again. <laughs> we're not making this up. It really is him both times. He really hates my guts. It's, <laughs> okay, ready? Let's hear your little... Hip-hop is not a fad. This isn't disco, Colin. And wake up because it's not the summer of 86. Maybe your old ass would enjoy some crappy music by Billy Idol, Boy George, or maybe Van Galen. But the rest of us don't. So keep your trap shut and watch more VH1. <laughs> Let me explain. I like this kid. Oh, yeah, I know. He's got spirit. But he's dead wrong. See, here's the problem with you, son. You grew up in a time when uh, people just say, and you honestly went hip hop. You went, to, you went to Harvard, this hallowed institution where aggravating comedy writers come out of. All these kids, but do you want the professor to actually sit there and be like, start a class, okay, uh, bitches ain't nothing but tricks and hoes. <laughs> and with those words, Dr. Dre and Snoop ushered in a whole new <laughs> genre. <laughs> I mean, let's face the facts. Hip-hop belongs where it belongs, with you in the goddamn Bronx. Not in Hollywood. <laughs> Listen, he's from the Bronx. He's from Gun Hill. The show's almost over. So log in and get to work, you craven anonymous backstabbing cowards. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, honey, I said it. So what's the problem? Uh, as we mentioned earlier, New York will open the country's first gay high school. This will provide an important educational experiment and a uh, theater department we can all be proud of. If you could design a high school for one group of kids, what would it be and what classes would you teach? Greg? I would open a school just for kids who plan on bringing a gun to class and shooting everybody. <laughs> I, I'd try to help them overcome the abuse they got in their other schools. There, there'd be tough love lectures like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, you'll never get laid with that acne and that Dungeons and Dragons pouch tied to your belt. <laughs> no matter how much creepy poetry you send to the head cheerleader. But don't despair. Just use the time you're not having fun to work hard and get rich. Then move to L.A., buy a portion, a big bag of Coke, and you'll be ball deep in silicone before you can say Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right. Linda. No, I think I would design a high school for really, really stupid girls. But there's a lot out there. And I would teach them things like a tattoo on your breast of his name is forever. <laughs> He's not going to pay you back. And finally, if you get a nipple ring for him, nobody's going to know because you're wearing a shirt. All right. Jim Norton. <laughs> Along the uh, same lines as Sundar, I think I would uh, open a school, and the students I'd like to most help would be the cheerleaders because I fear you're incredibly misunderstood. <laughs> First of all, I'd like you to know that those skirts you wear are a badge of honor, and you shouldn't spoil them with things like bras and panties. <laughs> And that, uh, that little powder you saw me sprinkling into your drink is nothing to be concerned about. Those little desires you have to put your head in your teacher's lap and make slurpy noises are perfectly normal. And lastly, it's okay to keep secrets from mommy and daddy. And to all you consummate worry warts, yes, technically you're still a virgin if you're only giving me the balloon nut. Okay. David. I would create a school just for jocks and future frat boys. And... Oh, wait, I guess that's kind of a, like a latent version of the gay school. All right, then. Um, okay. Then I would create a school just for bullies. Teach them how to be nurturing and sensitive. Well, that would never work. Uh, oh, wait. Better yet, how about a school just for pussies? Yeah. Teach them to kill with their bare hands. All right. I'm not saying this goodbye. I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to say goodnight. And maybe we'll, uh, I don't know, do we have a best of ready? Anything? <laughs> 